series between these two clubs stands even at 44-44 as we look at the officials for the Big Ten who will work this afternoon's crucial contest. If Iowa wins it, they are assured at least of a co-championship of the Big Ten with Indiana. However, should they lose and if Indiana wins at Michigan State, the title belongs to the Hoosiers. The Iowa lineup and Steve, they have moved Boyle into the backcourt. When we saw them earlier this year, he was at a small forward. There you see, and then if you see Ohio State's lineup, not much different. Those are the people who've been their players for the whole season. Iowa in the dark uniforms, Ohio State in the home rights, and the Buckeyes control the tip, and on the alley -oop, an excellent pass results in the Buckeye basket with Jim Smith connecting. And you know, we could see a very high-scoring, fast-paced ball, ball game today. Iowa likes to press up the entire... The, uh, uh, all over the floor, and of course we know when the game gets spread open, that's when Ohio State plays their best pass. Steve Wade is called for the offensive foul. His first and the team's first. Now watch the pass from Kellogg into Smith. Well, there you see, on defense, the back was turned. They couldn't see the ball in the air. Easy layup for Jimmy Smith. That's where he does his best, right around the basket. Iowa pressing. Scott comes across. Pull up. Up. It's 4 nothing, Buckeyes. The Iowa staff told me, they said, it's going to be an emotional game for Ohio State. They could score the very first 10 points of the game. Their players are ready for a, a big start by Ohio State, but they say over the course of the game, they think that their hustle and desire will prevail. Williams bothered Craftsman on the shot, and Smith is inside as they wait for the layup. Smith has four, and Ohio State leads six to nothing, and Iowa wants an almost immediate timeout. We have played less than a minute. Timeout is called in Columbus. It's six zip Buckeyes. Get oil from a stone? Look, this is shale with valuable oil locked in it. There's an enormous untapped supply in this country, a hard-to-get-at supply. But Texaco and other companies are working with radio wave technology to heat the oil and actually force it out of the shale. This process may take years to perfect, but there's a lot of potential oil at stake. When it comes to finding you new sources of energy, Texaco won't leave a stone unturned. Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. This bud's for everyone who serves us a hot one, pops us a cold one. This bud's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This bud's for you. One Friday night, the Winchell Corporation had to send 1,777 packages to 1,777 places overnight. One carrier couldn't guarantee delivery. Another wouldn't. And one said absolutely, positively, no. Then they called Emory. And since we take more packages to more places than anyone, we delivered everything on time. So call Emory first. Because in business, success means being at the right place at the right time. The rave reviews keep pouring in for Hill Street Blues. Does for cops what Lou Grant has done for newspapers. Saturday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. We understand we've had some audio difficulties. We apologize for that. Bob Costas and Steve Grody, we still haven't played a minute. Iowa back with the ball. Kenny Arnold is jumper no good. And the rebound is to Kellogg, the leading rebounder in the Big Ten, averaging 11 and a half carats a game. Scott in the front court, cross court to Penn, the jumper off the mark. And a whistle on the rebound. The call will go against Ohio State. Ohio State leading it six to nothing after a minute and five seconds. They have beaten Iowa four of the last five times they played. The last time they played here in Columbus, last season it was 70-69 Buckeyes. In Iowa City earlier this year, Iowa had a 15-point lead in the first half. However, Ohio State surged from behind to win it 58-56. Francis' pass through the hands of Waite and Iowa turns it over. Steve, Lute Olson has decided to go with the Twin Towers, playing Waite and Craftsman at the same time. Lute Olson's the kind of coach that's gonna go with the players who are playing well. He's got eight solid Big Ten players. It was way back again in the Northwestern game when they decided that they needed some extra height in the lineup. They went with Craftsman and Waite. It, it started working. They won five or six in a row. They stuck with them. It doesn't look like it's working today so far. Williams makes it 8 nothing Ohio State, and with that basket, Herb Williams has 2,000 career points. Francis and shot block. 
Brookins fires. They're still not on the board, but Boyle finally gets them there. Kevin Boyle makes it 8-2 Ohio State. And that's where Iowa gets you. They just come at you. They come at you. They never quit. Give them a break. They'll be right back in the game. Here's Todd Penn. Penn had 25 points in their triple overtime win on Thursday night against Purdue. And when Ohio State beat Iowa at Iowa earlier this year, Williams saving it in and Scott preventing the over and back by saving it a second time, but finally it becomes too hot a potato to handle and they do turn it over. I started to mention that Todd Penn was really a factor in Ohio State's come from behind win at Iowa earlier this year, coming off the bench with three steals, seven assists, and nine points. And Mark Gannon comes off the bench. You got to look at him there as Lou Olson makes the game's first substitution. It's Arnold, Boyle, Gannon, Wade, and Krasuson. The jumper by Boyle is good. He has all four of their points, and it's 8 4. Well, he really is the inspirational leader for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The funny thing about Boyle, being such a, I think, a great all around player, he simply has not been aggressive enough offensively. They sat him down and told him, look, get involved, go look for your shot. He's a tremendous, he's about a 55% shooter from the field. Scott just rocking it up the floor, but the basket will not count. There's a foul before the shot. Now let's make a correction on the Iowa lineup. Wade has gone out. And Gannon has replaced Wade. So it's Arnold and Boyle in the backcourt. Brookins and Gannon are the forwards. And Krasterson is the center. Iowa in their zone. And it's a zone that they, they've been working on specifically to use against Ohio State. It was kind of a matchup zone. They worked on it a lot yesterday. But you see Ohio State immediately brought it outside, forcing the ball man to man, and that's what they're in now. Mark Kellogg, he had 16 points and 11 rebounds against Iowa earlier this year. Williams, air ball. Loose ball with the run to Ohio State. Herb Williams, who missed that last shot, went past Jerry Lucas on Thursday night and into first place on the all-time Ohio State scoring list. But of course, Lucas had a three-year career. Williams has played four. Smith misses the turnaround, and a rebounding foul will be called on Herb Williams of Ohio State. Williams has not had good success. His last two outings against Iowa being held to 14 and 11 points, respectively. Which isn't really all that bad when you consider the great town Herbie's got. You would, you would hope for a little more point production. Right there, uh, I think an indication that they're going to call it close on the boards. I don't know that there was that much contact. You have to play to the officials and the whistles. Brookins with the head fake. His pass deflected. And Penn back to the head to Smith. Jim Smith. Has the layup roll off for him. Carter Scott's follow doesn't drop. And there's a foul on Boyle of Iowa. And I'll tell you what, there's going to be this kind of action the entire day. Penn, you know Ohio State wants this game bad. It's a chance for them to really close out a, a season that possibly hasn't been as successful. There you see the breakaway layup. I thought perhaps he might have got hit on the top of the head. And now here you see all the action, and now Kevin Boyle went up. That's dangerous territory when you start mixing it up with Jimmy Smith. Foul on Boyle, his first, and the team's third. What really made that fast break was a great play by Todd Penn as he batted the ball ahead to Smith. They didn't get the bucket, but it was a heck of a play by Penn. Brookins deflected it, and it goes out of bounds. And I think the last pass is, is kind of an indication how the offensive uh, pattern attacking the zone has changed. It used to be that you would never throw the ball across court. So many teams now will pick the bottom forward on the opposite side of the ball and throw that lob pass. In that situation right there, the Iowa defense ready for it. They knock it out of bounds. Williams misses, Smith rebounds, and hits! It's 10-4 Ohio State with 16-11 to play in the first half. Boyle has all four Iowa points. Off to Gannon, Brookins. Head fake, picked up by Scott on the double team. In the two games we saw Iowa this season, we saw that the zone sometimes gives them a problem. I was about to say that they, on occasion, don't do well from the perimeter. You certainly don't even expect Preferson to take a shot that far from the basket. It did go down. He will be at the line for the three-point attempt. His first team foul, number three. Foul is on Smith, his first team's third. Iowa has been a good road team this year, 6-2 and two in the Big Ten on the road, and 9-3 and three overall away from home. Ohio State is 10-4 and four on their home floor here in Columbus. Brasserson can't complete the three-point play, Gannon rebounds, so they might get four out of it as they set up again. And once again, just what the Iowa coach said. 
Ohio State may come out very emotional, jump on them right away, but over the course of 40 minutes, they think it's going to be the defensive pressure and the intensity of their ball club to come out on top. And Iowa turnover. They lost in overtime at Michigan State, 71-70 on Thursday night. Had they won that, they could have locked up at least the tie for the conference championship. Instead, they lost a heartbreaker as Kevin Smith got 25 and Jay Vincent 24 for the Spartans. Carter Scott has it rim the basket. Krasnison has the rebound and the outlet for Gannon. Gannon runs it down and it's touched last by Carter Scott as it goes out of bounds and it will belong to Iowa. Early in the season, Gannon was one of Iowa's better players. He's been very injury prone. He had an instep problem. He's had, you can see the bandaged knee. He had a pulled muscle in his leg, stitches across the eye. He's just now getting back into top form. He's an important player for them off the bench. He gives them a little more scoring threat. He's got it now. You can see he's good inside. He's got the body control agile. He's a very important player for them off the bench. Herb Williams commits the foul. The fourth team foul on Ohio State. And the second on Williams individually. 15.08 to play in the first half. It's 10-6 Ohio State over Iowa. And Gannon goes to the foul line. Ohio State ended a dismal five-game losing streak when they won in triple overtime, 93-92 against Purdue on Thursday night. In that game, six players fouled out, and Ed Major, a seldom-used reserve guard who had scored only one point all season, was pressed into action, wound up scoring eight, including a game-winning 10-footer with just five seconds to play. Gannon makes one of two, and the loose ball comes to Jim Smith. It's 10-7, the Buckeyes by three. We've played exactly five minutes. And if that's correct, in that Ohio State-Purdue game, if another Ohio State player would have found out, they would have had to finish the game with four eligible players. Smith backs in, but can't hit the turnaround. Fasterson has the rebound. Kenny Arnold, Arnold through the lane, and he hits the layup. Kenny Arnold, who had 19 in the loss on Thursday night at East Lansing, gets his first bucket of the afternoon and brings them to within one. And you see, hey, the key to this play was the initial, pa the initial pass to the middle from Boyle. Got it to the middle, it opened up the entire floor. He got the lane, took it to the basket. With all the criticism we've, we've heard about Ohio State, it's been their defense that's put them down most often. Can you see the break again? Now let's see if the basket will count or not. Let's watch the play again. Well, as we said, so often what you want to do is get the ball in the middle. In this situation, there are simply too many defensive players back to two on two. It's very difficult to get college players to stop and shoot the bank shot in that situation. There you see the uh, Ohio State player move again. That position through the charge. Did they count the basket? No, and that's why Lute Olsen is upset. The basket does not count. The score remains 10-9, Ohio State. Nonetheless, it's notable that Steve Krasterson really has been kicking the ball out on those outlets after the rebounds to ignite Iowa breaks, as he did there. You know, it, it shows you that you don't have to be a great jumper to be a good rebounder. He plays position very well. Blocks his man off the board. When the ball comes down, he gets it. Larry Huggins and Granville Waiters are in the lineup. We'll point them out to you for Ohio State in just a moment. Off the miss, Kenny Arnold back with the ball. Iowa, which gave up the first eight points, since then has outscored Ohio State 9-2. And now Kevin Boyle trying to give the Hawkeyes the lead, can't do it. And that's Larry Huggins, number 20, who has replaced Carter Scott at guard, grabbing the rebound. Clark Kellogg may have walked, and he did walk. In the lineup for Ohio State, number 20, Larry Huggins, a sophomore from Port Washington, Ohio, 6'3 and 180. And also in the lineup, Granville Waiters, 6'11 and 220, a sophomore from Columbus, just 19 years of age. He wears number 13. Hanson, of course, has come in for the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's Bobby Hanson, number 24, with the ball. From the baseline, Boyle works it into Craftsman, and they have their first lead at 11-10. <laughs> with four points. You would think with, with the disappointing season the Buckeyes have had that perhaps they would be getting the fan support, but I think this past weekend has finally been the most vocal the people have been all year. And of course today they'll be a big part of the ball game. Gannon misses. Huggins. It's 
not going to be a popular call, call in St. John Arena, primarily because a lot of people thought Burrow may have originally gone over the back when he knocked the ball off the backboard. Nonetheless, he did run it down the corner, and once again, it's the Iowa hustle that generally pulls them out on top. Lowe got it into Krasnison. Krasnison put up the underhander, but it's blocked away by Williams. And the loose ball to Kellogg. Kellogg fires the pin underneath the Granville Waiters, and they lose it. Boy, both clubs are just racing up and down the floor. Well, that's, that's both styles of play. Iowa would love to have this game go up and down in Ohio State, of course. There you go. See, that's just a tremendous block. Once again, I, this is going to be the kind of action we're going to see all day. Fast paced, providing that the teams don't turn it over a lot, and they shoot well, I would expect a high scoring ball game. Arnold gets the ball up, and Iowa has a 13 10 lead. They have outscored Ohio State 13 2 since trailing 8 0. Spider Scott, who was just checked back in, replacing Todd Penn. Goes baseline to Kellogg, and Kellogg muscles it up and in to make it 13 12. Well, that's really Clark Kellogg's strength. You know, he's good in the open court. Well, you'll see, he gets the ball down the baseline. He's strong. You've got to realize he's 6'7. You'll see him bring the ball down the floor, but really, his forte is around the basket. A great pair of hands, great agility, ability to put it up with either hand. He's a of course, and you mentioned before, just a tremendous rebounder. For Ohio State, Larry Huggins and Carter Scott are the guards. Herb Williams is the center. Granville Waiters and Clark Kellogg join him up front. From the baseline, Scott. In and out, and then it comes back in again. Four points for Carter Scott, and Ohio State reclaims the lead through the lane. Steve Wade, and Wade hits the layup. We ride the seesaw, and it's Iowa's chance to lead. The lineup for the Hawkeyes, Arnold and Boyle in the backcourt with Gannon, Waite, and Hanson up front. Well, I think the last two trips down the floor for Iowa have been a great indication of Ohio State's propensity to, to, to not be well uh, coordinated on, on the defensive end. Two easy baskets in a row, and they got a break going right now. Kellogg missed, Arnold back, running one hand, a goal off the glass. What a play by Kenny Arnold. Kenny Arnold. Half clock. The, Ohio, the Ohio State problems this year have been well documented in the, in the local papers. The one we, we're all pretty well familiar with is their inability to get it to Hunky Williams. You see him get it inside and he's doing the stick and score it. But they don't shoot well from the perimeter and that Iowa zone may give them problems. Gannon with it. Right side to Boyle. Hanson trying to set up in the paint. Take the lead with the basket here. 10-25. The play of the first half. <laughs> Kellogg misses the turnaround. It's by Granville Waiters. You know, Granville gets a lot of playing time. Comes off the bench. Usually they replace Herbie Williams. They got him in there now, I believe, to help on the board. He's a tremendous uh, leaper, and they tell me he's a pretty decent outside shooter, although we haven't seen him uh, enough to really be able to evaluate his uh, perimeter performances. Gannon, meanwhile, drills a 20-footer, and Iowa takes the lead at 19-18. Carter Scott. Here's the jumper by Kellogg. And Ohio State And officials time out with nine minutes and 44 seconds to play. Ohio State 20, Iowa 19. If you're a businessman trying to save a buck, Hertz can help. My lunch, my script. Pencil. Rent a car, $29.99. Just $29.99 per weekday rents a Ford Escort or other subcompact with 100 free miles. You can save on larger cars, too. So rent from Hertz. Saving money can turn a small businessman into a big businessman. On February 22nd, Notre Dame scored the most stunning upset of the year. Now the Giant Killers take on Ray Myers, the Paul Blue Demons. Will history repeat itself tomorrow?
The Big Ten Conference concludes its league schedule with five games today, and the conference is still in a position to establish two attendance marks. The current average for just league games is 12,447, just a shade below the record of 12,458 set a year ago. The Big Ten could also set an NCAA record for total and average attendance in all home games. The current mark, again, just a little behind last year's record-setting pace of 12,013. The preceding message was furnished by the Big Ten Conference. And a reminder, prior to tomorrow's great Notre Dame to Paul game. It's an NCAA special with Dick Enberg, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire. They'll take out the crystal ball to predict the final four, plus the champion. And many, many more surprises. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 12 Central, the NCAA special with Dick, Allen, Billy on NBC. Bob Costas with Steve Grody at St. John Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Eldon Miller. His club a disappointment this year at 13 and 13 overall. 8-9 and nine in the Big Ten Conference after being picked by many as co-favorites along with Indiana at the start of the year. Vince Brookins is short with it. Loose ball to Gannon. Can't hit the follow. Out of bounds to Iowa. Hanson will be the trigger man from in front of the Ohio State bench. 9-25 to play in the first half. Away. No foul. Smith touched it last. It's still Iowa ball. And I'll tell you, this, you know, this looks like an NCAA matchup right here. It's the it's just action-packed. Racehorse basketball, sometimes when they set it down on the half court, it's just muscle inside. We've got ourselves a great game. Brookins with his first basket of the afternoon. Iowa by one again. 21-20. Huggins in the backcourt. Ahead to Mitch Haas, who has just checked in. Mitch number 22. What a shooting performance we saw him put on a couple of weeks ago at Madison, Wisconsin, in a losing cause against the Badgers. He was just drilling those 20-footers. Well, and he would be most effective against the zone, the zone defense, as you mentioned, his ability to hit that perimeter shot. In the man-to-man -man situation, he doesn't really have the foot speed or the one-on-one -on -one moves uh, to really be an effective player. Nonetheless, he's in the lineup now. And the steal as they tried to get it inside the zone, picked off by Gannon, ahead to Brookins, pulls up baseline, and misses. Gannon, he seems to be all over the place when there's a loose ball. But finally it comes to Smith. Scott, Huggins, Haas, Smith, and Waiters on the floor now for Eldon Miller. Bobby Hansen, Kenny Arnold, Mark Gannon, Steve Wade, and Vince Brookins for Lute Olsen. Inside to Smith, triple team, hits it anyway. Once again, Jimmy Smith's ability to operate on the baseline. He's big and strong. His ability to score inside is, is everyone knows about it. If he beats you inside, it's your own fault. There'll be some substitutions when we come back, but we're expecting an official's timeout, and here it comes. We'll be back to Columbus in just a minute. You want your car to be a shining example of quality. So insist on top quality Napa brand parts. Because lots of Napa brand parts are better than your car's original parts. Case closed. When the name is Napa, the standard is quality. Steve. One-on-one. -on -one. I have to do some yard work. Or a I don't have to do any yard work. Would good friends really go at it this hard just for a beer? Well, consider it's Michelob Light. And that means a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. 102 to 98. How did you do it? Defense? Michelob Light. Compare the taste. After six weeks of dramatic competition, it's the Stars team with Peggy Fleming versus the 80s team with Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner in a unique team skate-off to determine the world team champion. Plus, two angry heavyweights wage war as Ronaldo Mr. Snipes battles Floyd Chumbo Cummings tomorrow. Hollywood Henderson has had more than his share of the headlines, both for his play on the field and his antics on the sidelines. And tomorrow on NBC Sports World, he will talk about his admission of his drug addiction and his painful effort to kick the habit in an exclusive television interview with Sports Journal on NBC Sports World tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Central Time. 
on NBC, the leader in innovative sports television. And Steve, as always, a reminder that we will be picking an MVP at the end of the game. That's something the fans and you and I can be thinking about as the game progresses. Iowa hitting better than 50%. Ohio State at 47 for the game. Ohio State with a one-point lead. Craftsison blocked again by Williams. That's the fourth block by Williams. Craftsison comes back for more, however, and gets the job done. And once again, the spectacular play by Ohio State and nullified by the persistence of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Craftsison, you know, he's really improved his point production this year and has been a big plus, uh, very responsible for the great record Iowa's had. Foul by number 15, Steve the Iowa foul is called on Steve Carfino, who has just checked into the lineup. He wears number 15. Watch Herb Williams block at the other end. Well, Ferris is not a great jumper. Herbie Williams just waiting for him to go up in the air and just... I'll tell you what, it's so tough to block the shot. The shot's taking five feet from the basket. Herbie's standing three feet from the basket. That's great, great timing. During the replay, Clark Kellogg hit a short turnaround off the glass for Ohio State. They lead 24-23, Craftsison. This time he faked Williams off his feet, and after the fake, he was home free. Well, and I'm a little surprised that they didn't blow the whistle on that one. We had a bad angle. It looked like there could have been a little contact. Craftsison has scored eight, 25-24. Exactly seven minutes to play in the first half. Clark Kellogg off the dribble behind a Smith screen. Rebound to Carfino. They got a three on two if they hurry. Carfino to Brookins. And he was fouled on the play by Carter Scott. The lineups. As Bobby Hansen is in there now for Iowa. Hansen, Carfino, Craftsison, Brookins, and Waite for Lute Olson. For Eldon Miller, Larry Huggins and Carter Scott on the back line. And up front, he's got his big three. Kellogg, Smith, and Williams. And Brookins will shoot a one and one. Of all the things you talk about when you look for a, a great college basketball team, one that would do well in the NCAA tournament, you can find most of them on the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. A great bench, uh, quick, fast players, pretty decent shooters. If there's one area they lack, and, and I wonder if it's been the res responsible for some of their losses, when they when they get behind in certain ball games, and we saw two of them, they don't have that great offensive player that can go out and just string up together five or six baskets. That may end up hurting them down the line. As Vince Brookins makes them both, Hanson goes out and Kevin Boyle is back in for Iowa. Todd Penn is also checked back in for Ohio State. This is Penn with the ball. Littlest man on the floor at 5-9. He's had some big scoring games, though. If you sag off of him and look to concentrate on their big men, which is a natural tendency, Penn will occasionally burn you if he gets a hot hand outside. Here's a steal by Boyle. Boy, is he good at that, anticipating passes. He was fouled by Huggins as he made the move to the hoop. There are faster and quicker players than Boyle, but few with the court sense of this guy. Well, here we're going to take a look at the foul. See Huggins right there. You judge for yourself if there's contact. But you're right. That, that's his forte. He can play forward and rebound for you. He can move out the guard. He's got the quickness. He, he makes up for the small lack of quickness and, and his smartness. He doesn't get hurt. Uh, he can play great defense. He'll generally guard the best uh, offensive player on the opposing team. He's just an all-around player. He's going to have a long, long career. As you saw, he's an 83% free throw shooter, but he missed the first one. An official's timeout. When we come back, Boyle has one more free throw coming. 6.32 to play in the first half. Iowa 27, Ohio State 24. When our band's cooking, the music smokes. But not me, because like a lot of my friends, I use Skull smokeless tobacco. I just take a pinch of that good-tasting wintergreen-flavored Skull between my cheek and gum, and it gives me real tobacco pleasure without ever lighting up. So when you want something that smokes, listen to the Charlie Daniels Band. But when you want real tobacco...